In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux 110 64-bit into VirtualBox 4.3.20 using Yosemite 10.10.2. So you can see I'm using a MacBook Air here. Start by going to virtualbox.org and grab whatever version of VirtualBox you're going to use. In this case, we're going to do OSX host. <clears throat> Make sure you grab the extension pack. Open up VirtualBox, go to Preferences, Extensions, click on this small triangle here, and that's where you can find the extension file you just downloaded. Install all that. Next, you're going to run restart your computer and go into your BIOS and make sure you've enabled um, Intel or AMD virtualization. On the MacBook Air, at least, and most of the MacBook Pros, it's enabled by default, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Next, find the version of the Kali Linux you'd like to install. In this case, I'm going to do the 64-bit. You can grab a torrent file of it. So we're going to go into VirtualBox. We're going to do New Machine. Keep the type as Linux. Set the version to Debian 64-bit. I like to increase the RAM to one gig, a little more stable that way. Click on create a virtual hard drive now. Increase the file size to 16 gigs. Leave it as a virtual disk image. You can do a virtual machine disk if you really want to, it's only matter. Leave it as dynamically allocated so that way you're not losing all that file space immediately. Click on create. Open up settings. Click on System, go to Processor, click Enable PAE slash NX. I like to increase the RAM on the display to 32 gigs. Again, give it a little bit better performance. Click OK. Start. Now find the virtual disk image that you were downloading earlier. So in this case, we're going to do Kali 110 AMD 64. Click on Start, go down to Install, press Enter, English, Enter, United States, Enter, American English, Enter. Now here we can find the network installation settings. So keep it by default as Cali, press Enter, domain name, leave it blank, press Enter. Root password, I like to set mine to Tor, which is root spelled backwards, so T-O-O-R, T-O-O-R. Time zone, Eastern, Enter. Choose Guided, use entire disk, Enter. All files in one partition, Enter. Finish partitioning and write changes, Enter. Right change the disk, select yes, enter. Now this is gonna take about 10 minutes. So go up, go for a walk, grab some coffee, whatever. So next it'll ask you if you want to use a network mirror, select no. Now it's gonna pause for a couple minutes, but just let it be. Next, it'll ask you if you want to install the Grub bootloader. Choose yes, press enter. It'll say the installation is complete. Click continue and it'll restart. So, the system is rebooted. Go in and choose the first option. Now we're going to log in with the account we set up earlier. 
Type in root, password tor. Open the terminal. Now the default installation guide tells you to run apt-get, apt-get install Linux headers. So I'm going to show you what happens when you do that right now. So you'll notice by default, it doesn't actually find the headers correctly. And this is relating to how Kali Linux is handling their, um, uh, their apt aptitude um, package management. So sudo nano etc apt sources.list. Now you can see they only have one installed right now. So what we're gonna do is start up Ice Weasel, with, uh, kind of like Firefox. And then Kelly, Linux, headers, error. Choose the first option. And what this is going to do is give you a list of a bunch of the um, other repositories you can use. So what you do is go down here to copy C. I'll tab back into that. Control Shift V to paste it. Control O, enter, get the file out. Control X, close it. Now we're going to do apt get update. Let this run for a minute or two. So once everything's done, we're going to go back up and press up on the keyboard and run the command again to install Linux headers. Now, this is going to take a little while, it's about 64 megabytes, so. So go through and update libc6. All right, once that's all taken care of, Move that down, move that down. Go to Devices, Insert, Guest Editions, CD Image. Just cancel. Grab the VBox, Linux Editions run. Drag that over. Change directory to Desktop, ls, we're going to do sudo mode 0777, or 775, vbox, and then press tab, enter. Now we're going to do period slash vbox tab, enter. And this will actually start installing the virtual box guest edition. All right. Once that's all good, go ahead and delete that file, inject the CD, and we're going to go to shutdown, and we're actually going to shut it down. All right. So open up VirtualBox, find the system you just made, go back to settings, click on advanced. And this is where you can start actually using the VirtualBox guest edition feature. So I like setting up the Sherry clipboard. That works out pretty nicely. So you can leave all of that the same. Uh, one of the nice things is to do a shared folder. So you can say where the pathway is. So I like to do things like uh, you know, sharing the downloads folder or sharing one of my sites folders, for example. You need to do auto mount. Okay. 
All right, start it all up. So you can see here one of the early signs that you've installed it correctly is that the desktop is a lot larger. So I'll click on other, root, tour, and it'll resize itself back down for us. So there you go. Kai Linux all set up for VirtualBox. So you can see all the various tools here. I mostly use the web application tools. Now, because your system is brand new, fresh, ready to go, it's a good idea to take a snapshot of this. So if you mess up anything, you can always fall back to it. So go to machine, take snapshot. I usually call this initial setup. And there you go. So have some fun with Kai Linux. Catch you later.